try again. Fans, welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast. This is episode 525. I am, oh, it's called Detroit Lions 2024 Free Agency Fire. I am your dashing host, Chris, and with me is my good friend and also gloriously coiffed host, Jeff the Riz Risden. How you doing, brother? It's good to be with you all on a Saturday afternoon. Saturday. I like this time slot, Chris. I do too. I like it. I really do. I mean, I'm going to step on UFC a little bit, but I'll, I can, I can replay. It's not a, a numbered fight. So we're good with that, but no, I really like this and man, this Illuminati travel I've been doing, <laughs> you saw it in the, in the, uh, in the slide, I'm sure the reference, um, it's just been whew, two more weeks, two You've more been, weeks. Uh, been hanging with Aaron Rodgers by chance. Two more weeks until we uh, clean things and we get back and foot in the ground. But even then, I could be going out of the country <laughs> in April, and I've already got the first week of May out. It's nuts, man, nuts. So, all right, we got a lot. We got a lot of football stuff to talk about. It was a big, big week. We've got some some really, really stuff, and uh, some re- we get some really, really stuff. <laughs> so we get got, your, we get that's no that's adjective required. Grammar, Chris. <laughs> no gram, no no adjective required. We got some really, really stuff. Uh, was let's it see. no grammar required? Wasn't wasn't that a Nelly album, or was that just grammar? I, I don't, never mind. It's not okay. important. Let's go on. Okay, let's talk lions. All right, we're gonna do our warm ups like we usually do. So jump in for that. Make sure we can get you guys all and gals all acclimated. Uh, free agency signings. We're gonna talk about that. A uh, whole lot going on. Coaching extensions plus a little something something. Keep your ears perked. Uh, the Lions. A couple of them re-signed. We'll get that on there. Uh, talk about free agency departures and a whole lot more. We got a great show lined up. Mister Risden, sir, are you ready to go? I am. Let's do it. Let's kick this off and break it down. All right. Ooh, kick it off, break it down like we do when we do what we do like we do. Yeah. We got really, really stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, first <laughs> off, thank you, A Ward twenty one eighty four for the subscription. Appreciate you doing that. It's very, very kind of you. Love you. Uh, also, we got to say uh, just. A lot of thanks for Ash for holding down the fort for us while we're out, man. Um, it's, yes. he's, he's been he's just been pumping the content and uh, really, really appreciate him doing that. We're not going to see as much of him in the next month. He's got a little something, something happening. Um, he'll he'll keep working in the background, but uh, just get 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 better, buddy. We got you. We got your back. Mm-hmm. So uh, good stuff to, you know, good karma. Send an Ash way. Ash's way. We'll get him back in here on the mm-hmm. on the mend. This is, uh... So uh, let's Sorry. see. My, also, my camera's awkward today. I apologize for that. It's, it's not bad. just the camera, Jeff. Don't worry. Uh, oh, we that's, also that's for damn sure. <laughs> want to talk about the draft party coming up with the draft. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, you, you're going to have priority to get in. Oh, by the way, Berkheiser, I've got something for you. Answer your damn DMs, <laughs> Berkheiser. To the DJ booth. All right. Um, so yeah, we've got a we've got an awesome draft party coming up, and y'all, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Thinking thirty to fifty ish people talking drinks. We're talking private, undisclosed location, and it's a party. I don't party. even know where it is. I'll just show up. They'll tell me where to go. I'll be there. It's a party. Be the secret knock. It's it's a it's really really cool. So got some really cool ideas. We're gonna have some fun. Giant giant screen for the draft uh, and good times. Um, I'll just kind of open it up for the folks um, who'd like to join. Um, obviously, Patreon people are getting the priority. It's gonna be somewhere between thirty and fifty people. I think we're gonna do. Uh, it's no okay. ticket cost or anything like that. It's all gonna be. I mean, if you want to donate, you can. Sure, we'll always do that. But um, it's just like I said, private party kind of a thing. Um, we'll have food. We're doing. Maybe bring a dessert. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll coordinate. But if you want to get in <laughs> and you and you and, and you want to get yourself to the front of the line, that I think just the first thing we're gonna do. And I don't know. Maybe you can email it if you don't want to. If you don't want to put it on Twitter, we're just gonna do a costume contest. Just a costume contest. Could be Lions related, could not be. Surprise us. 
something you think that we would like. We'd laugh, we'd love, whatever. Send it to us, mm-hmm. and um, we'll we'll grab a couple of folks um, who like to go costume. If you're if you're one of the Patreon people, think about a costume. Send us a pic of the costume. Like I said, uh, so it's Chris at DetroitLionsPodcast.com is where you can uh, send that to or on Twitter at DET Lions Podcast and just put hashtag draft party, DLP, hashtag DLP draft party. That's what we'll use. That'll be, uh, That's we'll one. be able to find like that. that. Yeah. And uh, we'll I select, like it. we'll select, I don't know, 15 people, 20 people out of the, out of the costume yeah. folks for the, for that. We'll just do a fun little contest. It's a stand out, do something that stands out. All right, there you go. There's your announcements. Oh, can, I, can I add one? Can, can I add one quick thing about the draft in general? Um, there's a lot too. of consternation um, both in our Slack, uh, our Patreon Slack, and also just in in general conversation about people wondering when the NFL is going to inform, like what's going on if you got your admissions to the draft. I'll just say this: um, we haven't heard back on our credentials yet, and we typically don't. For like, like even like not just me, like. Daniel Jeremiah, Dane Brugger, like they don't know that their credentials have been approved yet. And we probably won't learn until April before that happens. They do not do a great job of advance, I don't know, whatever, advance work on it. I, I can't Can I read this. That. It's, it'll come it looks in like a flame. There it is. There you go. Okay. You have a free first round ticket. Okay. Look how much that is. Good. The bottom. Oh my gosh! Starting at two thousand seven hundred eighty dollars. Yeah, that's not worth it. Uh, I'm just I'm just gonna tell you all that that straight up now. That ain't worth it. Don't buy it. Don't do it. It's twenty seven fifty for a first round draft ticket. I think you'll enjoy our party. Costume button. Chris, I think you can enjoy a Buffalo Wild Wings and like buy a round for everybody on the money that you would spend on that. And you will get a lot more fun out of that. That's just, uh, that's crazy. Um, I I would not dissuade anybody from going to the actual draft. It's fun. I will be there that Saturday. Um, I love doing that. The third day is my favorite day of the year. Um, My family knows that. They know that I go away for that day and I don't Mm -hmm. come back. It's, it's awesome. It might um, be there I for love, the first two days too now. <laughs> well, maybe we'll but see. your new location, oh, no. yeah, I my have, friend. <laughs> I do have uh, uh, FOB Canton set up, so yeah. we're good there. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the third day of the draft is when you get diehards in there. But that's also um, I've said this story before. When we were in Chicago, the last year it was in Chicago. Day three, the me- the weather was absolutely miserable. It was like forty degrees and raining sideways and awful. But there were a bunch of us that were in the tent, and my son happened to be the only Houston Texans fan in the entire place. So when they needed a reaction shot, my son got on national TV tearing for Tyler Irvin getting drafted, even though he got cut like right away. Um, <laughs> and like it was, it was really cool. Like it, 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 we bonded with a lot of people. Um, um, my good friend Rishi, who's been to a couple of our uh, our training camp parties, was there with me. Um, great guy. So Rishi, Rishi can also. Uh, Attest to the the draft. The third day is the best day to go. Actually, I, I take that back. Friday night is the best day to go. Um, but if you're like a, a draft diehard or you want to avoid pricing stuff, Saturday is the day. Twenty seven fifty. You're not even gonna. You're not sitting with with crack man. You're not sitting up in the front. You're out in the boons, man. You're out in the back. You know, it's 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 nuts to me that they're 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 pulling that out for a ticket. So for those that want you to go spend- for it, it's sounds sounds like an interesting thing. But they're obviously catering to a national audience, which is why that number is so big because it's going to scare so many people away. But they've got such a wide net cast across the country with 32 teams that they'll sell that you know they'll sell that thing out and they'll be fine. But uh, anyway, our draft party is probably the place to be. We'll stop. We'll go with that. I agree. <laughs> sure. All right, seven fifty. You can you can you can go spend a week in Cabo for that. And yeah, get Pacifico fresh. <laughs> so don't forget costumes. Anything, it's it's all you. Get a rise out of us. Send us uh, your you in your costume at uh, Chris at Detroit Lions Podcast if you if you want to keep it one on one ish, uh, or you can tweet it at uh, Det Lions Podcast with the hashtag DLP Draft Party, and uh, we'll get like like I said. Somewhere between ten and twenty people will pick, and we'll bring them to the party just because of the costume was where, where something we want to pick. So good times. All right, let's get yeah, into fun. this a little bit. Uh, Warm ups. First, first thing we'll talk about key dates. Uh, I like to just kind of tr- talk through that a little bit for folks as we work through the the off season here, and uh, you know the new league year had begun on the thirteenth. 
Um, the whole free agency period kicked off, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Coming up then is the 24th and 27th of March. There is going to be the annual league meeting. They'll be talking about rule changes, things like that. Off-season programs begin in the 15th of April, and the 25th through the 27th is the 2024 NFL Draft, with May 2nd as the deadline to exercise your fifth-year option for 2021 first-round draft picks. So there's the dates. It would be Panay. <laughs> yes. Yes, so I would expect that we'll have news during <laughs> during or before that date. Um, okay, let's uh, let's get into this. We also want to talk about Jonah Jonah Jackson. And this is something I'm gonna I'm just gonna say just so everyone knows. Um, we talked about Jonah for a while. The season was still going on <laughs> when we were talking about the Jonah situation, and and not to really expect him back because he's asking too much. We told you there was an offer on the table in the preseason and he wanted more and his play for us didn't hold up for it for this year. It just wasn't going to make sense to sign him to what he wanted. And lo and behold, he has departed. He has gone and he signed a really big contract that we would not have signed. End of story. Just one, you know, we know we got to, we got, he your, get, we got he, you the info to his, to he and his agents credit. They, they read their market correctly. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Yeah. His agent would have done a disservice. Um, had he not gotten him all that money. Now, if he wanted to stay that bad, he could have, but he put the line and that's where I'll stay for this, but that's it. Otherwise I want the, this much money more than staying. So we got, you, got, there, we got you covered. Yep. So keep your antenna up this show. Good luck, Jonah. We may Good luck, be, dude. we may be showing you sharing some other stuff as well as we get going here. All right. So there we are. The key dates warm up and, and Jonah will talk out. We got through the warm ups. Let's get into the Detroit Lions free agency editions. We'll talk player by player as we get through here. This is this is interesting. This is this is a good time. Let's just start with uh, Edge Matthew Betts. We got him. Game changer. Hutchinson isn't going to wow. even make the team anymore because we've got Betts that's just going to close down that I, edge. Uh, is that what you said? I had show? legit. I had legit forgotten that he was. Uh, a free agent signing. I guess he does technically qualify. CFL free agent, but he's, like I said at the time, he's worth the tire kick. Let's see what we got. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there we go. Um, that's fun. That's fun. Uh, yeah. We'll move on a little bit, a little bit, you know, bigger on the edge, a little bit more interesting. Marcus Davenport joins the team. What is, what do we get with Davenport? What's he bring to us on, on the edge uh, across from Hodge brother? So, his first former first round pick. Um, I don't. Were you at that Senior Bowl? I, that was twenty nineteen. I want to say. I was in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he was really really good there, and for about for one full year in New Orleans, twenty twenty two, and about a quarter of his rookie year, he was also really really good for New Orleans. The rest of the time, Saints fans were kind of like. Like, like, kind of the way we were with Iffy. Like, do something with that physical potential, you know, hitting him with the stick. Um, and it just didn't happen. So he had a fantastic year, nine, I think it was nine or nine and a half sacks in 2022, his last year, contract year going out into the market. The Vikings sign him. He plays like crap and gets hurt. Um, uh, and it, so the sentiment from Vikings fans is this guy's awful. Ha, ha, ha. Detroit, you screwed yourself. And their, their perspective is certainly valid because they got the worst of him. He has been injured a lot, and that's part of the story. We, they have to say with, well, frankly, a lot of these guys because that's that's one of the things that, you know, the meme is true. Like, you know, the, the dude, you know, like looking at the fried chicken, like, like oh, give me that. Like, eh? And uh, it, with Brad and injured players, because that's that's the way Brad that that's where Brad gets his money money ball value. Yeah, injured players yeah. taking the risk. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's Emmanuel Mosley. You, you get get what you get. But next He's year, Emmanuel Mosley could even be as good as three years ago. Emmanuel Mosley <laughs> potentially. We'll see. He's back. We'll probably talk about that in a minute. Um, <laughs> so Marcus Davenport. The only thing, the only issue that I have with with signing him and and giving him the shot that he did is they paid him a lot of money to do to basically replace Romeo Aquara. Yeah, and last year Romeo Aquara was a better player than Marcus Davenport. 
it's an uncomfortable truth um, that Vikings fans are going to rub into your collect the our collectively the the you know no sotros form our minds Vikings fans are going to be like y'all blew this. Who's and who, who's again, their quarterback right now? Sam I got, Darnold. I got something they can blow until they trade. So <laughs> quick, quick sidebar. Their trade that they made yesterday is not the last trade they're making in the draft. They yeah. are moving up to two or three to get either JJ McCarthy or Jaden Daniels that much or, or Drake may. Um, in fact, may is probably more likely than either of them. That's that much is pretty clear uh, because Josh McCown is their quarterback's coach. And he was uh, Drake may's coach once upon a time in high school. That's for another time. Um, Davenport is, I, I like it, but I, I do think that they paid a lot for a guy that, so what this tells me, and that the amount that they're, they're guaranteed for him is that they're probably not going to be using a first round pick on a, an edge. And I think a lot of people were sort of there already. Um, and the the spot that they're in, like, isn't a great spot to be in for getting an edge, but I don't know, man. It's it, it's hard to it's hard not to read that into it, but it's also like that is reading too much into it too. So, it, let's just hope that Marcus Davenport is healthy. He's in shape because um, that's something that the Saints dogged a little bit. Like second year after he had started out the rookie year pretty well, like he kind of got a little full of himself, maybe some full on some jerk chicken. And you know, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but he, he's a good player. When he's healthy and when he's dialed in, I don't think that the Lions would sign him if they didn't think that he would be dialed in here. Um, that's pretty clear. That's what they're good at. So yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's uh, it's, it's an interesting that... one. This is one of all the moves they made. This is the one that deserves the most scrutiny from skeptical fans and from the outside. Okay, I I'm, well. Yeah, I I may have something to rival that, but we'll talk. <laughs> um, but I, I don't disagree on the player front for sure. That's it. It definitely deserves um, everything you said. The scrutiny you talked about and the curiosity. Can he live up to the expectation, or is is his worst ability availability? Right, because that's that's. I think a really it's a one year deal, so you know it's 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 much like Mosley was last year. If it doesn't work, no sweat, man. We, he's gone. It's not like he's going to linger on the roster for three years and suck cap away. Absolutely. All right, Marcus Davenport. We've added two edges. Edges. Um, worst case, we can rotate like crazy and they'll be fresh while Hutch sweats his ass off. I mean, uh, we lost three, so <laughs> we, we needed to add. Yeah, there. yeah. We're not going to add it in the first round. And this is again one of the things we talked about in the last show. Is this is kind of. Where we land and what we sign in free agency is going to really help us outline and define what this draft will put to probably look like. And um, over the course of the next week or so, it's going to become really, really clear. Um, it, it, as clear as it can be with Brad Holmes. I think positionally we'll feel good about what the draft will look like, but it's going to be very, very difficult. Once you get past these top 15 players, Brad Holmes is an absolute wild card. I mean, we've seen that yes. in the draft so far. He's an absolute wild card. So we'll be looking to, you know, positionally try to typecast him this year as to where he's going. But it's going to be a lot harder as an, at an individual level to figure out who he's going to grab. Agreed. All right. Um, all right. Let's get into it with next one. A young man named Amik Robinson, cornerback. We've signed him. Um, Riz. I know you have some thoughts on him. Let's just start about how is he going to do for us in the slot? <laughs> <laughs> I will take a direct quote I got from somebody who knows Amik very well. If they wanted him to play in the slot, he wouldn't be in Detroit. Straight quote. Yep. Yep. He is not a he's a he's an abnormally short outside corner he's not small he's short there's a difference he's he weighs more than a lot of guys who are playing uh, uh, the, you know uh, he, he probably weighs close to what cam sutton does quite frankly um he weighs a lot more than ennis rakestraw does as an example um for a lot of people who want by the way that ship has sort of sailed from lion's land it's kind of interesting um how we come and go on prospects um I, i'm not just i'm not upset about that either 
Frank the Tank in the house. <laughs> Frank the Tank is in the house <laughs> from Malone's. Nice. Frank, I'll tell you again, draft week, hey. part of the draft party. We're going to bring the group down to Malone's, so be ready, man. Um, Frank the Tank fun. from the east side. What's up, fellas? I'm excited about all the free agent signings. Love it. Just like they said, bring in the competition. Go Lions. That's Swing right. for the fences. Bring in the competition. Right, Frank? Swing for the fences, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the keep scoreboard. Your, keep, keep your feet in the ground and keep reaching for the stars. That great Detroit man once said that. Um, yeah, so Amik is a um, – I so I scouted him extensively. I actually did his combine interview. I did the transcription for it. Um, or maybe it was the senior bowl, one or the other. I, I know I, I spent a lot of time with him. He is a dog, and I mean that in the good way. With a big W. He wants to get – Yes, he wants to get after you. He wants to annoy you. He wants to bark at you. He wants to bite you. That's the kind of player he is. Ask Christian Watson about him, like, underestimating his leaping ability because uh, he picked off a pass or deflected, I can't remember, against the pack. Christian Watson is five inches taller and 35 pounds heavier than him, and Amik wrestled the ball away by high-pointing it over Christian Watson, who went up for it, by the way. Yep. Yep. You are not people are sleeping on Amik because he played he the Raiders, their first coaching staff, the first two coaching staffs actually that they had with him, insisted, oh, he's five eight and a half in cleats. Like he's got to play inside. Well he sucks inside. He knows he sucks inside. He he his hips are way too tight. He's just not a he doesn't have that sort of you know instant fluidity. Um, that you need to have in the slot. He's much better at getting into people on the outside, turning, using the sideline to his advantage, using the inside leverage. He's very good at that. That that's where he's at his best. And uh, he is he is for all intents and purposes your Jerry Jacobs replacement on the roster. And I think folks will like him. Like Jerry, we obviously have a special relationship with Jerry, but I think folks will have that same sort of adoration for the underdog the chip that is on his shoulder is bigger than his shoulders and that's the kind that's what you're getting from amik um i i really like the signing and again budget friendly not because you know, if it doesn't work for some reason you're not tendered to him forever I you know it. who else is short but not small Diggs, quandre Diggs, and he had the dog in him and he i know he's a safety yeah. not a cornerback but my man played hard and he played mean and he had that whole kind of junkyard tendency and and it's it, you know, I, I think there's something really, really interesting. Um, Brandon in the chat, he couldn't spell it a couple times. I think he's doing speed to check what, or speech to text normally. Amik sounds like Finner. Yeah. That's a pretty good, pretty good little comp there. Oh, um, yeah. Corlin fin Finnegan. <laughs> Corlin Finnegan. Yeah. Um, um, who uh, feisty. famously got in a fight with Andre Johnson. <laughs> he's feisty, but the dog in him is huge. So Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a fight dog to size a of dog w. ratio is great. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you all, Lions fans, you're going to like this guy. You really are. I know people are turned off like, why'd we sign this corner who couldn't play regularly with the Raiders? Like, it's not their fault that Josh McDaniels was their head coach, folks. Um, yeah. Antonio Pierce knew what was up. Yeah. Yeah. Got to take that into account, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, can you imagine Diggs, Sandra Still, and Robertson? That'd be fun. Be fun to watch. Um, we'll see how that plays out. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then I think probably the biggest Pierce signing. Good. <laughs> definitely the biggest signing. He's not coming to Detroit, but he's good. <laughs> <laughs> definitely the biggest addition to the team in more ways than one. Defensive tackle, DJ Reader. My man is fucking, sorry, <laughs> is King Song, King Kong size. He is all beef, man. This guy is a nose, 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 and boy, does he know. Brad knows, knows. This is a guy, not only is he going to be great, but he's going to help build up the young guys that are out there trying to play in a position like this right now. He's going to bring so much to this team. Uh, questions about his injury, and he's pretty certain he's going to be out there from the get-go. Um, Riz, let's talk about DJ Reader. How do you feel about this signing? Do you remember Snacks Harrison when he came to Detroit and the yeah, instant yeah. impact he made? Yeah, absolutely. Well, picture him, but like younger and still with a little bit more more juice in the in the fruit to to squeeze out because that's that's what you're getting with DJ Reader. He's not like he might get 
he might fall into two and a half sacks next year, but he is going to make Aleem get more sacks. He's going to make yeah. Pascal get more sacks. He's going to help the A gap blitzers specifically. Iffy, Anzalone, Barnes, Campbell. He's going to make their pass rush that much better. He's exceptional at clearing lanes for blitzers. That's, that's one of the things that the Bengals loved about him. Yeah. Um, I covered him when he first got to Houston. Um, he's a good guy. He's a very easy guy to like. He's he's genial, uh, but he plays nasty. Uh, very good, very good player. Uh, with a quad injury, he talked about it, um, and I, I wish I could remember the person's name who interviewed him for the Dayton Daily News, um, but check their piece out. They interviewed him in late January, and he's like, yeah, like, like I've because he went through it before. And he's like, this time the injury wasn't as serious and like the surgery was easier because the the tendon or whatever snap didn't roll. It just like stayed flat. So it was a lot easier to fix and he could get into rehab better. So he's ahead of schedule from where he was last time. So fingers crossed, he'll be good to go for, they probably won't make him do um, mini camp, but training camp. Um, he should be at least out there and like, you know, getting close to being ready to go. So I, I feel pretty good about it. And he's a guy, he's a true pro. He, yes, he's 335 pounds, but he's not sloppy. Like he's he's a he would be if he were not a football player. It's not like Taylor Lewan, who's down to like 240 pounds now. Like once once he stopped playing, right. he let it all go, get away. And like Reader, his natural body weight would be like 300. Like he's just a big dude. He got a little bigger, obviously, but uh, this he know he knows how to take care of himself. He's not out of shape. And I think that's that's one of the things that you worry about with the the giant guys like that. Yeah. And he to he compare him again to compare him to last year's roster, he's he's so much better than Benito Jones and Isaiah Bugs and whoever else was in that middle. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's, Bugs it's not it's really it's really not even worth like the conversation. Mm -hmm. Like he's that much better than that. Again, and I'm I'm very this is another guy. I think Detroit's really gonna like him. Um, I, I know him a little bit, um, not enough that he would ever return a text or anything, but you know, I, I like him. I, th yeah. I think he's going to do very well. I Brandon really comes in with everybody in the national level is bragging about all the running backs that the NFC North teams have signed. And we just got the ben, best run stuffer in the league. I love it. Yeah. This is yep. this, this Smart. line, like you talk about, you know, Aleem, Pascal, reader, Hutchinson, whatever you've got, you've just got something really special brewing here. And I talked a little bit about how a good defensive line makes your secondary better. We had a really good set of linebackers who are only going to be better this year. You've now yep. improved your defensive line significantly and you've improved your secondary. This defense is definitely on the rise in 2024, brother. This is all, I mean, I love what Brad's cooking with here what he's added and how he's not gone stupid with the spend Sneed out there. He's, you know, everything looks good except how much money does Sneed want. Mm -hmm. Sniff, sniff. Don't need it. See you later. Move on. Right. That's, Nothing. that's the holdup. Like, so, and so I ain't going to fall in love with, I ain't going like, to fall in love with something stupid is, is where Brad's at. I've yes, got a, I've got a budget. Exactly right. And if you're not in my budget, I don't care. See you later. I'll move on. You don't want to play for a Super Bowl yeah. winning team. That's what you told me. Move on. And that's you know where limits. we're getting to with, with, with Brad Holmes. Now is the future as he's rolled this out and showed his hand to other players. Players that ring chase are going to have to understand you're going to ring chase, but we're not going to overpay so you can chase a ring, right? We've set a precedent for how we're building this team. And now as we become a destination, we're not going to break our window. We're not going to slam it shut with broken ass contracts. We're going to keep this in the window wide open and keep running and running and running. This is how you build, you rebuild a, a, a team to win multiple championships. I hope we get there. I really do. Cause we're doing all the things right. Right. It just now there's bounces of the ball. There's player injuries, things like that. There's things, there's some intangible things that happen during the season, but the way, what we've built here, it's, it's a better team than was last year. Everybody's a little better than they were last year. I think we took a significant step forward, but by all intents on paper right now, we should be in the Super Bowl in 2024. That's, I mean, just, just on paper, the, the improvements we've made. So um, really, really good moves. I love what Brad's been doing. And again, 
it's a little bit Ben Johnson, how Ben Johnson calls plays and sets up three, four, five games down the road in the season. Brad is setting up two, three, four years down the road for this team and its contracts. Love it. Absolutely love it. We, we do have some extensions to pay. We haven't had an extension talk yet. I, I, I wouldn't expect a lot on that front right now either, which means mm-hmm. they're probably going to announce, you know, I'm on route tomorrow, but um, what coming across right now? <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, that's that's the way that works. Uh, they've been very quiet on that, and uh, we'll see. I don't know, but they haven't done anything that nibbles into that pot. You know, that the 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 Amon Ra, Jared Goff, Panay Sewell, um, other other people that they're going to have to extend at some point or make decisions on. Like they they can still pay all these guys. Yeah. Um, fair market value. They're not going to have to ask them to take a, a hometown discount. Yep. And uh, I think Brad kind of wants to keep it that way. Yeah. Oh man. I love it. Yep. All right. Good signings, good moves, good plays by Brad, the right kind of risk tolerance and the, and the, and the right kind of money spend. Just love how he's worked this yeah, out. So re- reader was what? 28 and 20, 14 and a half a year for two years. Um, that that's, that's good rate. Um, yeah. But again, two years, if it doesn't work, you're not paying him in 2027 when you're trying to pay other people. Yeah. Be gone. Yeah. All right. Going to move on to the next topic because that's what we like Mm -hmm. to do sometimes. We do. Detroit Lions front office coaching extensions. Let's talk about it. Let's start at the top. With both of our favorite player, which is odd because it's it's goofy. When jerseys weren't a thing, when no, you look at the old timey oh. um, football clips and you see the crowd, no one's wearing team jerseys or anything. Riz and I both had one. Chris Spielman signs yet another contract with the Detroit Lions. Awesome, w- go, I love it. We need a guy out there filling the divots on the field during training camp, and it, I mean to lose. Chris Spielman and his expertise with that bucket of sand. I don't know what, I mean, what we would have been thinking to let that go. Chris Spielman signed to the Detroit Lions again. It's, it's great to keep him around. You know, he is one of the people that was instrumental in, in the hirings that they've made. And just, I, I wish, I, I think it was, wasn't it Justin Rogers who spent like a day with him or two days with him? Mm-hmm. Or was it Burkett? It was I Rogers. think it was Justin. It's one was, of his best. It was it just, yeah, it, it just yes, it that's right. Yes, it was great writing. Yeah. One of the things that shows yeah. what Justin can do. He's really special. I would, I would love to, to have somebody do that again now, um, because mm. I think Chris's responsibilities are always sort of flowing like down the river. Like, yeah, he's he's divot man. He's also de facto assistant linebackers coach and de facto assistant run backs coach, and uh, he's not above being a dummy on special teams like but he also is involved in the scouting i can tell you he's been at a couple of pro days representing the lions not the only one who is there but uh he that might be a little bit of a tell we're gonna we're gonna find out more this year on that front because last year he was at alabama's pro day and they drafted alabama uh he was at what other one? There was one other one that he went to that we could confirm, and they drafted somebody for. Oh, Iowa, Jack Campbell. Yes, he was there for that one. Um, so this year, I think I can safely say this: he was at Illinois, and he was at Western Michigan thus far that we know of. Um, in an unofficial capacity, um, I understand at Illinois he wasn't even credentialed; he was just sort of there. So. Hmm. Johnny Newton, Keith Randolph, maybe you want to keep an eye on that. We'll see. I don't know. We're, we're, we are all, and I'm talking about all of us in Lions media land, trying to figure out what tells there are, there might be. So it could be nothing. It could be him throwing us deliberately off and, you know, they ignore those players completely, but it's, it's, it's at least worth mentioning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. So Chris Spielman gets in. Let's lock in the next one. The man. Brad Holmes extension. Locked in for a couple more years. We got Mr. Holmes signed on. I think I'm okay with this. Um, we took a little bit of a chance. He's done okay. I think I can I can mm-hmm. I can get behind this. Um, probably a, another prove it deal, right? <laughs> Sorry. 
I try to find a way to <laughs> to say that Holmes probably got a good bag here, right? Because he deserved it. He's earned his ass. I off would of hope this, so. With this team, man. Woof. I hope so. And so I have not seen the the nature of the the contract extensions, but generally these are like we're giving you more money, and we can't say that we're just like paying you extra money, so we have to add another year onto your contract. That's in effect what these extensions are. It's a way to give them bonuses without just like, oh, we, we're going to give you an extra $5 million because you've done awesome. Like you can't technically do that. Mm -hmm. You have to do it this way. This is the way that you can get it on paper and get it legally done. That, that's exactly what this is. There's no, it's not about job security at all. It's about giving them money for what they've done, yeah. period. Yep. All right, so we got that. And then last but not least, we've got Big Dan Campbell signs himself an extension as well. Takes home a little bit of That's bacon to the fam jam, right? He's he's enjoying that. Another well-deserving man. Um, three guys that really helped this team get to that NFC Championship and almost, almost the Super Bowl this year. And they'll be why we are going to get back there hopefully next year uh, and hopefully a little bit further next year. Yeah. Certainly can. Potential Sarah. <laughs> Brad or Ben in the uh, in the chat. As long as Brad stays healthy, he should be continue to contribute. <laughs> okay, so this is this is great stuff, and I and I love it. We've got these guys on lock. Things are great, but there's something no one's talking about right now. Uh oh, what's that? And it's because they don't know. I guess shingles I doesn't care. Yeah, is it oh, shingles. Shingles might care. The coaches below these Sorry. guys, below the coordinators aren't getting this kind of consideration. There's a lot of coaches that weren't offered raises. There's a lot of people that didn't get good shakes that are crucial parts of this organization. And I hope the Lions, now that they've got this part settled out, have figured it out because there's no salary cap for coaches. And when you don't, you don't take care of your guys, you're going to lose key parts. It isn't just Dan, Chris, and Brad that made this team work. And we have one of the, the smallest coaching payrolls in the league. Don't get cheap with the guys who got you here, Lions. Tisner, figure this out. Figure this out. Get these guys fair contracts that are competitive in the league because these guys got you here. Don't be dumb. Please. Please. We uh, <laughs> see what happens on that front, uh, especially for guys who had opportunities to leave. I can't say and more. Some did. Some did. I, I can't say more. Yeah. I'll tell you some stuff after. Yeah, so it's, it's, no, they, so, they don't um, ask so, this up, Lions. I, I know you got the big guys and you got the names and they and they sell well, but it's it's part of the team. And to find the pieces that fit, like they fit in an organization like this, they're not, they don't grow on trees. They don't no, they go don't. on trees. Go on trees, and you've got some top performers that you're now putting at risk because you're being cheap. Figure it out. Work something out. Cheap, but they, they've got they one could, of the lowest payrolls more. for coaches in the league. They're being cheap. Yeah. Some <laughs> of that is the, fix this. They, Riz, they I'm telling you, tenure. But, yeah. I'm, no, I'm telling you right now. I'll tell you after. I'm telling you. I know. <laughs> I know. Don't F this up, Lions. I mean it, because you're effing this up. All right. That's that. That would be very disappointing to, to have certain individuals leave. That's that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I would suspect that um, – I know one of the people that you're talking about, and I suspect that he will have an opportunity to leave after the season, whether he wants – People that won't need to be promoted to leave. To or not. <laughs> that's, that's what you have to worry about. Well, they, the Lions have set it up that way. The Lions have set it up that way. You don't want you don't want people looking um, because what the foundation of what this team does and why they're successful at what they're doing with what Brad and and Dan and their strategy is, is that they have assistant coaches and position coaches who can develop talent and foster that team oriented, you know, camaraderie, but also like the the brotherhood and the fact that they know what when when a player shows up they're going to make him the best possible player that he can be. And that's what's you're right, Chris. Those coaches, <laughs> those coaches don't grow. They're not everywhere. Cause if they were, people would have them, 
And the Lions are doing a very good job of identifying who those guys are. Um, I think, obviously, we've had our foibles with defensive back or secondary coaches. Um, cornerback coaches have has not gone well. I think they got this one right this year. I really do. I think Deshae Townsend is going to be a very good hire for that. Yep. But yeah, the the that that's why this team has done so well. And it's it's interesting that you know where, where we look at you know where the holes have been, where where the what where the primary fan complaints are have been defensive line and cornerback. And those are the coaches that are gone. Like, I don't think that's coincidental. Don't think that's coincidental. Bigger. All right. We'll see. It's, uh, but that, that's you know, one of the things that, that I get asked when I do shows outside of Detroit is, you know, why, why are the lions so good at developing or how are they good at it? And I'm like, guy, because they, guys. They have, they have, they have Kelvin Shepard and Hank Fraley and Antoine Randall L and really good, smart, former players who can develop talent. JT Barrett's growing into that. Mark Brunel is growing into that. Like they got some, they got some good dudes, man. Um, and I, Don, Don Mulebach, by the way, deserves a tip of the hat. He's become a pretty good special teams assistant coach. Yep. He really has. Yep. All right, so we'll get into the next one. We'll uh, we'll rock and roll. We go from the coaching extensions. They got some key people locked up as coaches. Uh, more work to do for the Lions. All right, let's talk about the free agents that the Detroit Lions re-signed. Got to keep some guys around, right? You can't just let them walk and talk. Uh, we pick, we uh, locked in Shane Zilstra. He's on the team. Good. You feeling good? Okay, okay. Anything okay. you want to say? Uh, well, uh, I, I, no, he uh, he got hurt. Like. It's a great opportunity to, to let him redeem himself. He got hurt yep. by, he got hurt by Khalil Dorsey, by the way. Um, yep. So yep. one year, less than a million dollars, one year, yeah. less than a million. That's good. We'll take that. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see. Good. Next one. Uh, Graham Glasgow, as he's well known in the, the neighborhood. Um, Graham Glasgow is back so three years so and $20 glad. million. Dollars. I love it. I love it. Man. So glad he's back. the stash is back. He's the personality he's got starting off all. starting offensive lineman keeps some continuity up front. Great, great signing. Wanted to be back. Um, we had talked last week that like this was his last chance to get a, a multi-year payday. I wasn't sure that he would get that in Detroit, but Detroit, they stepped up and did it and uh, paid him, th- what is it, three years, $20 million, um, which is $3 million more than what Jonah Jackson is going to get per year. Is Graham, is Jonah Jackson, so that's 50, that's what, $51 million? Is he two and a quarter, two and almost a half times better of a player than Graham Glasgow? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. There we go. And you get your, your right. backup center. I still like JPJ. I still think that's a you throw him as a. He's such a great piece for now. You got Frank. You already, you already got a backup center, but you got JPJ who can play guard for you for a year and stay juicy. You can put him in at center if you get your guard Jeez. next year. If you don't, right, you still have Graham who can go to center or him or what. It doesn't matter because you've got him long term. It allows you to work the draft. You get your next guard, right? You can keep just stepping through it as a draft. You don't have a multiple need situation. So um, I like what they're doing there. Glasgow is a good one. I'd love to see JPJ. I just not only do I love that kid, like genuinely love him. If I see him again, I'm giving him a gigantic hug. And I'm going to send him a nice note, his mom a nice note because she's so great. (laughs) Um, Yes. It just, just really, really good kid. I would love to see him on this team, but what a, what a way to go. Let's go to the re-signs. Let's go back to the next one. We talked a little bit about, about the uh, NFLPA president, Jalen Reeves, Mason, Maven. Um, can we call him president germ? Is that what we, was that his official title? I like, I like that. President germ. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, two year, like seven and a half mil. President germ is back on the team. Cornerback Emmanuel Mosley. We saw, we talked about that last week as well, right? Uh, that was mm-hmm. one year, 2.2 yeah. 2 mil. Uh, but yeah, money badgers back one, one year, 1.3 mil. That's a good deal for him. Um, this is a new one from last week. The skips skipper is back. God, death taxes and dead skipper. So so happy. He's back. So happy. He's back. I love this. And this, so if you remember in the past years, he hasn't signed until training camp has started. Um, one year even signed in Indianapolis, um, and, and came back later. This is a commitment to show 
to reward Skip for being Skip. Yep. Best six best sixth offensive lineman in the league. And they use that more than any other team in the league. Or at least they have. I haven't checked the stats from last year yet on that, but I'm sure they were they're near the top if they weren't the top. It's and a I'll valuable t- role. I'll tell you one thing that's really funny is the uh the Decker reported thing. Nothing changes on the sneakiness of that. If anything, it now causes a different type of distraction for the opposing defense. Because if they keep doing that and pulling that, and it's always skips the the the, the defense has to focus on that. That's something they have to take. Somebody, at least one person, has to clearly focus on that every play to see who's coming in and report. It's just mm-hmm. another wrinkle that's going to keep a defense defensive player's mind or multiple players' minds busy trying to figure out what the Lions are doing. So I don't think it was bad that it was exposed in that way. I think it might actually be kind of cool because now it's out there for every team to see and they say oh shit we've got to account for this too with the the ben johnson offense so i i, I really think this is good love it love having skips back love his attitude his drive his grit he's he's the whole thing i i feel i feel a lot of myself in the skip <laughs> love what the lions did in making him the feature player on their highlights for madden that was yeah fantastic. yeah oh god he, he looked awesome as a punter i'm telling you we need to try that for real we absolutely need to give him a, a shot. <laughs> He's a good sport about, beyond all that. Yeah. And like dudes that are that big, like you can find some guys that just don't want to be bothered. He's not like that. Yeah. He's, Skip is a minute. I wouldn't say Skips. that he's a reach out brother. I'm talk. Yeah. I wouldn't say that he's like this jovial giant or anything, but he's, he's, he gets it. He, he gets Between it. the lines. He's a fucking animal. He is, yes, he is. He's he's unhinged, barely controlled. I love that. I Go love back and read the that. scouting report on him from from Arkansas. Like people are like, he's a little personal foul prone. <laughs> yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He 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 will he will come close to a felony if he can on every play. That's just how that's how he's built, and I freaking love it. And I think Campbell loves it too. That's what you want in your your backup tackle. I love yeah. it. And by yeah. the way, he is right now the only backup tackle on the roster. So yeah. and, and aside from the value that he brings as an extra lineman, right now he's the only extra lineman. So. <laughs> Go Skip. All right. Uh, so we got Skip back. Cornerback Khalil Dorsey re-signed. New contract. And it wasn't given the RFA tender. This is, this is one that surprises me a little bit because um, aside from the fact that he did injure Sheen Zilstra, um, like 10 feet in front of me and Ben Raven. <laughs> like, oh, that's not going to be good. Like, they're going to, Zilstra's going to be gone and Dorsey's going to be cut. Like, we, we had that conversation right there. Uh, I, so he did play some cornerback, and he was the guy who took over when Jerry first got hurt before they switched to Kendall Vildor. I didn't think he did all that great. Uh, he wasn't egregious, but like, there was just so many th- weird things. Like, I would, my hope with this move, and I don't know the answer to this, is that this doesn't preclude them from taking an extra undrafted cornerback and bringing him into the mix because I don't really want Khalil Dorsey playing cornerback. Sorry, dude. I, I just don't. Like, now if you're, if he, now if he is your special teams guy, if you're bringing him in to take Chase Lucas's place, um, okay. If you're going to let him maybe return, he does have some return ability. Okay, I'm not sure I want him on defense. Is that okay? Like, I, I just don't. Sorry, dude. It's okay. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, well, I, I, we didn't get the Nate Sudfeld reaction out of you, but we'll take that. Uh, <laughs> from last year. Yeah, Sudfeld could be back, by the way. That was so fun. Um, like nudge, nudge. Say no more. <laughs> long snapper watch. Scott Daly re-signed to a new contract. Um, couple of shaky jobs. He's no he's no mule, but he is back and he looks uh he, he he's he's definitely strong. He's definitely he's you know what I mean? What well, yeah. th- that's the thing. To be the guy after the guy is always so yeah. hard. You know what I mean? He's done a pretty good job of it. And and we did see drop off from him to Jake McQuaid when Daly got hurt last year. He, he hurt his knee um on a field goal snap, I believe it was. 
And there was a little bit of a drop-off from him to Jake McQuaid, who was a former pro bowler who played for the Rams for eons and the Cowboys for a while. Mm -hmm. Uh, So welcome back, Scott. Uh, Another another, uh, restricted free agent that they did not tender, but brought back on his own for effectively the same salary they were going to pay him. That's a little weird. Um, and I don't know, I don't know where my head is on that. What, what What's your thoughts on that? Because I'm like, I can see like, this is really strange, but I also see like, okay, there's a little bit of benefit there too. I missed the question I was producing. <laughs> Sorry. I heard, what do you think okay. about that? I missed the premise before so, that. Everything after that. Daly, <laughs> Daly and Dorsey were both restricted free agents that they chose not okay. to tender offer. And then they brought them back yep. anyways at the same price that they didn't need to, um, which is weird to me. Is that weird to you? It, it is, but I think this is this is a message to players. Deliver and we'll take care of you. I think that's what it is. I generally because the, the cost is not significant. It's not, you know no, what I mean? It's it's not. it's it's it's, in, yeah. it's it's insignificant in the scheme of things. Yet what it means to players who come here, right? Who who to compete and to do your thing and be the very, very best you compete, just don't show up and take pictures, show up and play. This kind of thing I think means a lot. So that's that's what I think it is. It's more of a signal to the people who come to the team in the future and who are here today. We'll take care of you. We're not an evil organization. Except with our coaches, uh, we're not an evil organization of players, but we will we will take care of you if you if you give, we will also give. And I think that's what they gave with Jerry. They gave him the chance to go and do something somewhere else, and didn't hold on to him till you know they got him out there early and they they let him move early and do his thing. So I think it's a good organization that treats people well. I wouldn't be surprised if Jerry wound up back. And I'd be happy to see Jerry back, but wherever Jerry lands, I hope he lands somewhere because he'll be in the NFL again. Yeah, he's I he's think, too good a cornerback not think, to be. Uh, I think I think the 2024 door is, or at least the initial 2024 door on Jerry is closed in Detroit. But yeah, he's yeah. got a shot to be. I think I think he's going to land on his feet soon, and I think uh, I I would not fault any Lions fan from continuing to cheer for Jerry no matter where he winds up because he's a good dude. He deserves yep. it. Deserves the second shot. Yes. Yes. All right. <clears throat> so with that, we have one last free agent re-signing. A young man agreed to a one-year deal. A young man named Donovan Peoples. Jones back in Detroit. I like it. I like it. Cheap. Good. Solid. Has opportunities to return balls. I mean, he, he's, a, he's, he's a good fit. And a good piece of the organization. And and look, I'm not sure what's going on with Reynolds, but I very much see that he could feel that he could step into that Reynolds role if he and, and, and Goff could put together that kind of chemistry. They spent a year working on it. They have an off season to work on it. I have a feeling he could be that kind of clutch guy that's down the down the uh the, the depth chart a little bit. He'll get an opportunity to prove himself. He and Antoine Green are probably fighting for the same role. Yep. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that in camp. Who knows? Um, yeah. The uh, so that's that's like wide receiver four slash five with special teams duty on it. Yeah, they can still add. This doesn't stop them from drafting a wide receiver. Um, they could draft one in the first round. I don't expect that, but wouldn't, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. This is a pretty good year to need a wide receiver. Yep. Um, I, I would be a little bit surprised if they don't take a wide receiver at some point in this draft, because it, there's just so many of them and you don't want to, you don't you don't want to be late for the party on that, but no, no, not at all. Yeah. Um, and I also, um, Brandon asked, Brandon Kerr actually asked me this on Twitter. Does this rule out re bringing back Josh Reynolds? I don't think it does, but I do think it puts a little crimp in it. And I will reiterate not everybody, not every player has the mindset where they want to come back to a situation where they cost their team on their own a trip to the Super Bowl. That could be awkward and yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't know that's the case with Josh Reynolds, but don't be surprised if that's comes out. Yeah. That way. Yeah. And okay. I, I can't fault him for that. Like it, again, he catches either one of those passes. The Detroit Lions are the NFC champs in the, in the Super Bowl, playing for a, a world title. 
Um, but because he dropped them both, they were not. We know, Riz. You told yeah, us last week, quit man. rubbing it in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> quit rubbing it in, man. It hurts. It does hurt. You yeah. were with me when it happened. I know. Was I happy? Yes. You were, you were laughing. I, I did not uh, throw anything. Uh, SOL, I'm, that's what you I'm said. I myself for not throwing anything. <laughs> no. As you yeah. know, when I'm angry, I get very quiet. Yeah. yeah. Our hotel room was freaking silent yeah. for a long time that day. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yeah. Right. On that, since we've got the right the right kind of mental space right now, we're gonna go to the sad zone of Detroit Lions free agency departures. Okay. Men who were lions on this team that took us to the NFC championship are no longer Lions no more. No more. Uh, Edge Julian Aquara, no longer a Detroit Lion. Tight end, Zach Ertz. We barely knew ye. <laughs> so he was never technically on the roster, but. We <laughs> hardly knew ye. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> OG Jonah Jackson. We talked about that. Best okay. of luck, my friend. Best of luck. Except yes. when you play us. Yes, for sure. Except for when sure. you play us, for sure. Um, CJ Gardner Johnson. Take your fucking ski mask and get out. <laughs> I say that. I didn't I didn't dislike him, right? I didn't dislike him. I hated the ski mask thing because that thing blew up. But uh it didn't work out. And I think I, I think just based on what we heard, it was it was good. It was a good time for everyone to move on amicably. So I don't want to throw any any wood on the fire or start any fires, right? CJGJ is a, wow. is a fun player to have around. He did a lot for this team and this this defense. He bucked up guys that were just that needed bucking up you know what i mean they needed some he brought an an edge that they needed yep Yep. absolutely absolutely so i I, now he goes back to philly and they are paying him a lot of money a lot of money yep shocking amount of money given the the safety market yeah but good for him yeah yeah Um, no he did what he needed my understanding and i i i don't know this but you know you know how the, the the telephone line goes Sounds like he was not going to entertain any offers from Detroit. Again, I don't know that, but that's that's the word that's on some streets was that he was ready to move on too. So did you just say these streets are telling me something? They they're they're not these telling streets. me something. They told other people something and they were related to me when I met with them at a pro day um that I was at on Wednesday, which is the hearsay from these here. streets. These streets talking to these streets yes. are telling me down the block. <laughs> yes yes got it um but, and he's he's happy going back to philly where he blasted their fans and their fans blasted him back and now they're in that's, love again that's the, the kind of, of guy he is and i uh, as you know chris i envy that because i don't have that I, that's that's not my personality that he can go and willingly do that and like embrace it god bless him man like i i can't do that but you know good for him and i, I will not root against him unless they're playing the lions but uh no, I'm not sure the Eagles are as good as they were. The, well, here's the thing, the thing with the, the 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 Eagles. It's weird. They. It's very weird. I've said this: individual players, spot to spot to spot to spot, they were better than the Detroit Lions. But as a team, yes, they were not. They were not a team at all. I'll say a guy like CJGJ coming in. I, I think that's a I negative to the oh no I think that's a negative oh. to the team please because he's oh, a very much me guy I'm the guy I'm the yeah. player I'm the starter I'm the I'm the I'm the me right I'm talking I don't care if it's my team someone else I'm talking right oh well that's just who I am he's very much an island of one he's the start that's of every true. story that's that he true. tells and I think that could very well be a problem he could also pull people together Right. And he did early with the Detroit Lions yeah. secondary. I she just did. don't think a team in the shape that they're in will do well with what he brings as far as personality wise. And now, if he doesn't pull that and he, and he comes in a little bit like with a different approach, great. And, and look, I'm not it saying it's bad stuff. either. It's just him. It's just the nature of who he's been. Right. And that's fine. It's, it's, you know, people right. are who they are. Um, I just don't think it's going to work as well there. I think they're they're in a in a real in a lot of trouble. They're in a lot of trouble. The, the Philadelphia they're in a Eagles. weird spot. I don't know. So Dallas is too, for that matter. Um, now that yeah. Tyron Smith's gone, like mm-hmm. I that that whole NFC East is funky. Um, yeah, because 
I, I don't know what's going to happen with Washington. I expect Jaden Daniels will be their draft pick, even though I mocked J.J. McCarthy there. I don't think he's going there. I think it's J- I think it's Jaden Daniels. I like Jaden Daniels. He's my number one quarterback. You can check that out at DraftWire. Shameless plug. Put up my quarterback big board today. DraftWireUSAToday.com. Check it out. Lions will not be in the market for a quarterback this offseason. Probably not even signing one as an undrafted free agent. I think they're going the veteran retread clipboard holder route. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But everybody likes to talk about quarterbacks. So there you yeah, go. There you go. All right. Also leaving and signing elsewhere. The man who tries to take the role of the flu. Anthony Pittman, linebacker, signing with the commanders. And he followed Lance Newmark there. Yep. That's not Anthony a surprise Pittman, to anybody we, who knows either of them. <laughs> Anthony Pittman, we totally knew ye. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, great story. Yeah. Um, for, you know, coming out of Wayne State, making his hometown team, being good, being an asset on special teams for a long time, like a freakishly long. I think it was here five years, five, six years, five. Mm-hmm. I think it was five. Yeah. Like. He belonged, but that time had come where, like, you know, Trevor Nowoski is gone now because they kept Michael Anthony Pittman. I keep thinking Michael Pittman. I don't know why. They're not, the same <laughs> they're not even related that I know of. <laughs> yeah, that's why Nowoski is in Arizona. And by the way, he's going to get a chance to start next year. Yeah, they're, they're very bullish on on young Nowoski. I was too. I digress. Uh, I think I think good good luck to you, Pittman. Seriously, um, good guy. Understood it like was a good role player teammate. But I think it's time that you know, with all the linebackers they've got already, he knew he wasn't ever going to see the field on defense. And I think he's one of those guys that was like, I'd, I'd I'd like to try defense at some point. Maybe he'll get that shot in Washington. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. All right. Sorry. Um, Got a weirdo walking down the street. Last but not least. Dude, it's 37 degrees. Put pants on. What are you kidding me? Sorry. 37 degrees. Are you kidding me? Let me see here. It's cold down here. My toes are actually numb. (laughs) Are you kidding me? You sure you don't have the beats? (laughs) It's 86 out. What are you talking about? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Damn it. Crazy time. It's busy at that airport. I'll tell you this, a lot of people coming down. Um, okay, so there it is. Benito Jones. Benito Jones is Benito Jones campus. is where it's warm. Yeah. <laughs> it's warmer than here. He there. and Deshaun Hand signed at the same time. How yeah. awesome is that? Good for them. <laughs> Good times. Made it made it so I only had to write one article instead of two. I love that. <laughs> um, Benito. Though it's where one, he came from. One, the one, two other people just to quit hit really quick. David Blau and Teddy Bridgewater have retired. Um, unsigned. Yes. There's a stack of folks. Um, I'm going to run through it really quick for the unsigned players. Uh, Nate Sudfeld, Mohammed Ibrahim, Jason Kabinda, Josh Reynolds, Anthony Fersker, Matt Nelson, Michael Schofield, Sco- Schofield, Schofield. I hate that fuck. Schofield. <laughs> you know who I'm. Ta- you know who I'm talking about. It's messed me up on that. Uh, Halapulati Vitai. Uh, Tyson Alualu, Alua, Alua, uh, Romeo Aquora, Charles Harris, Jerry Jacobs, uh, Kendall Vildor, Chase Lucas, Will Harris, and Jake McQuaid are all unsigned. At this Chase time. Lucas signed in San Francisco. Ooh. He yep. is a 49er now. So yep. There you go. He can and not play cornerback for them, too. That's right. <laughs> Uh, future deals, Jamar Jefferson, Jake Funk. Got the funk out. Uh, Tom Kennedy. Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Uh, Maurice Alexander, Traquan Smith, Doris Fountain, Connor Galvin, Matt Farniak, uh, Michael Neasy, Natain Moody. Peace. Thank you. Chris Smith. I'm, I'm putting German at it. Mitchell Agude, Chris Craig James, and Brandon Joseph. There you go. All on futures deals. So in the future, I'll Brandon Joseph right now, by the way, is our number four safety. Um, <laughs> and I would not put it deal. past him to make the team this year, huh? but I also think that they're going to bring in at least one more competition for him. Yeah. All right. Here's one. I saw a tweet that proposed the Vikings give the Bears two firsts and Justin Jefferson for the first pick. 
FanDuel or DraftKings, I can't remember which. This would be an absolute epic story to trade that first round pick inside the division for Caleb, right? Because that's what it's all about. Yeah. So there's a couple things with that. First <laughs> off, I don't I don't think Minnesota views Caleb Williams the way Chicago does. Mm. I don't either for that matter. But he is not everyone's number one. And I think that's something that the the draft media food chain above me has not expressed all that well because they're all in love with Caleb Williams. There is real skepticism about him from some places, um, myself included. I'm, I'm not sure that they would. Uh, Chicago's taking him one. Like it, uh, people are just trying to make headlines now. He, he will be the number one pick. Uh, the bigger question is what are they going to get for Justin Fields, if anything? <laughs> That like I saw something someone saying that they're valuing Justin Fields with around the same level as Sam Darnold, which is crazy that's, to me. That's, I don't I don't get that. Like, why hasn't Pittsburgh already traded for him? They got rid of Kenny Pickett, Russell Wilson's their starter. Like Kyle Ru- Mason Mason Rudolph Kyle, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Mason Rudolph the Rudolph's the talks. Red noses. He's terrible. He's terrible. Um, like. The, Come on, what are you waiting for? Like you're not if you're Pittsburgh, you're not drafting a quarterback early. Like Justin Fields, okay, yeah, he needs some work. You're you're gonna be able to get him that work. Do you trust your new offensive coordinator? Do you trust your quarterbacks? Do you trust Russell Wilson? As Russell will treat it out. I've already I'm already raising somebody else's kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's got some experience there. Ouch. Um, Russ is a weird dude, man. Yeah, but, uh, he's, yeah. I, by the way, I like that, that Kenny for Pickett's or that, that move for Pittsburgh. That Kenny Pickett like story is is really is really crazy. Like that's that's nuts to me. They did not treat him. <laughs> like we talked about the Eagles enough. I don't get that move for them at all. I really yeah. don't. Yeah. Like what? Why? I don't know why Kenny wants yeah, to play behind Jalen Hurts rather than <laughs> you, you, right. you've got a behind better Russell shot. Wilson. Yeah, you've got a better yeah. shot of taking it over from Russell Wilson than you do. <laughs> yeah, he must he must not have been the the all encompassing you know greatest player ever that um, the Pony dude in Pittsburgh made him out to be. Yeah, I, yeah. I swear to God, every time he tweets. I, I seriously question if he's special needs or not. Like, what? <laughs> like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't. I don't wow. get that guy at all. Maybe I'm not a Pittsburgh guy. I'm, I'm yeah. Cleveland. That's maybe yeah, Pittsburgh's a different place. Uh, Bears will keep yes, Fields yes, and is. Caleb, according to Dan Pass. Would be that would be awesome if they kept both, because that would be just a dumpster fire. So that was that was a conversation I had with my good friend Brian Perez and uh, Lauren Cox, who hosts Locked On Bears. Great guys, love those guys. They're, even though they're Bears people, I love those guys. And we talked about that one eight over barbecue down there. Like they could legitimately do that. And then we sort of got away from that. Like that's not what they're going to do. And now it looks like, like if you're Chicago, are you going to find a better backup quarterback on the market now than you would in Justin Fields? If nobody that Justin wants is your able guy, to, nobody wants your guy. Uh, you're kind of stuck with him unless you want to cut him. If and Justin then, can humble himself to accept the fact that I've got to prove myself, like all the glory that I had from being a first round pick and setting the NFL rush, rushing record for a quarterback, all that doesn't mean squadoosh right now. I got I got to work my ass off to prove myself what? with a coaching Oosh. staff that knows me and doesn't hate me. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't love you, but they don't hate you. Like. Uh, that's a very strange thing. I would love to be in the Chicago Bears draft war room having the conversation about what happens to Justin. And will he will he try to divide the locker room between him and Caleb? Like these are dynamics that they have to consider. I I don't know, man, but that that's fascinating. That would make a wonderful hard knocks. And what a does wonderful hard knocks? What does Caleb say? Does he step up and pull an Eli Manning? Say, I will not play for the Chicago Bears. Can you imagine? Oh, I and would he is that kind that. of guy. I would love that drama. That's I that is one hundred percent who Caleb Williams is. So yeah, I that's gonna be fun. 
love that. So after that, he gets yeah. drafted and stuck there, holds out. Like there's all kinds of conversations and problems. Then the two of them yeah. are in a locker room. And as Anand says, the tragedy is the entire locker room loves Fields. Can you imagine? Like, and they do. <laughs> all that they do love him. That's that the way, like. I'm not, not making that up. They do love him. It's weird. Arlington that, Heights that has says, to be hard knocks. Stop building that stadium. I don't want this shit show in my town. <laughs> if that's not hard knocks, the NFL <sighs> drop the ball. <laughs> if that oh. situation plays out. Woo, be that would be fun. And that then they have the so number fun. nine pick, and they're going to get Romo Dusney, Malik Neighbors, Brock Bowers. Like, they're going to reload their – they're having a very interesting offseason in Chicago. Let's put it that way. And it's worth it's worth watching. They traded for Keenan Allen. There's enough drama Quietly there that a, something silly great, could great get pickup. screwed up. I, we'll see. He's older. We'll see if he's still got the gas he in the tank. Older. If he does, I, you know, good good on them. But um, we'll see. We'll see. I don't Ooh. think they're the last place team in 2024 unless that quarterback situation just really goes south. And it could. Well, who are you thinking then? Minnesota? Minnesota. Yeah, because their quarterback situation has gone south. <laughs> and you're asking a rookie to step in, and I... I think it's Sam Darnold. I, I, <laughs> sorry, I can't. I just love it. <laughs> oh, oh, the best thing God. about Sam Darnold is that his, uh, his uncle was Dick Hammer. Or grandpa was Dick Hammer, the Olympian. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. We forgot to ask for that. Hit your like button, please, while you're watching. You're enjoying this. You're quietly just having a good time. Spaced out for a listen, listen, you know, while watching Riz space out, thinking about dick hammers. Uh, hit the like button. Give us some love. Give us I a sub. Actually. Those subscribes are, are very helpful for us and help us get the stuff out and help us get found by folks out there. So I uh, really appreciate you folks for doing that. Again, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. We ask once per show, so we did that. All right. Dick Hammer. Would be a scary name for a pro wrestler. <laughs> I knew a girl who was nicknamed Dick Hammer. <laughs> I didn't, but I could think back and name a couple. Um, all right, Riz, let's see. We've got the folks that aren't with us. We've done a little pontificating. We haven't crapped on the on the Packers really quick. Is there anything you can think of to do? Drop a drop a quick turd in there, punch bowl. Can't let them they're having it. The, uh, no, I mean they're they're kind of the same that they were. Um, I don't know. I don't know. They're they're good. They're to be respected. Respect your opponent. If you if you don't respect your opponent, there that's that's when you get into trouble. But they're not as good as us. I don't care what Mike Greenberg says. Chicago guy. <laughs> what if Dick Hammer was your finishing move? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be spectacular. I swear to God. Um, did we <laughs> talk about Carlton Davis? We didn't. We didn't. Let's do that because that's a lot better than talking yeah. about the camera. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, maybe. Depends on who's listening. <laughs> Go out now, Dick Carl Hammer. Davis trade. <laughs> Go ahead. The Lions traded a third round pick this year. Their their own oh third God. round pick, not Minnesota's third round pick. It's number ninety two in the numeric, but it's the pick number ninety one because Miami futzed up. At least I think that's how that goes. I don't know. I'm, Again, there's too many things to go on. I can't keep track of numbers. I'm not. I'm numerically dyslexic. Like I've had that forever, so it's tough for me to keep track of numbers as it is. But uh, that when there when there's a, a pick that isn't actually a pick in there, it really throws me off. <laughs> like so. <laughs> Anyways, the Lions don't have their second third round pick. Their own third round pick. They sent it to Tampa Bay for Carlton Davis in return. They also got Tampa Bay's sixth round pick this year and next year. Yes, I didn't make a section for trades. I should have done that. Yeah. Uh, That's so yeah, okay. Carlton Davis, it's so, a good pick. I like this. I like what this does. Yeah, so like you've, this, this you've, you live in Tampa. You've seen mm -hmm. him play quite a bit. Give, yeah. give your impression on Mr. Carlton Davis. I think, well, as long as he stays out of Craig Reynolds' way, he's going to be okay. <laughs> I know Craig is your your is to you like Jerry is to me, Craig. right? Yeah, I love Craig. Yes, <laughs> but uh, I too. <laughs> no, I think he's a solid player. I think he has a lot to offer the Lions, and he's an absolute upgrade uh, in our secondary. And he just adds to the totality of lifting up our players. And I would say, if you have a depth chart that extends beyond your top guy, 
and below your lower guy. And on that, so that's the depth chart. And across the league, you can kind of paint teams up or down on that depth chart. You know what I mean? I would say that ours has moved up a couple of spots this year by upgrading talent on the line. And and that's what you, that's what you really try to do. If you can take your, you know, get rid of your bottom guy and your top guy is the next guy up the ladder. What a great move for the team because it, it, it elevates the entirety of what you're asking your players to do. And now you're having better players do um, things that better players should be doing rather than having players that aren't as good do things that they can't do. Um, so the way this, you know, our secondary is gone and this, this addition just kind of elevates the entirety of the secondary. I'm interested to see how it comes together because the secondary is, is a group that has to be a group, much like the offensive line, the communication and that bond and the understanding between them and how they play is crucial. It's absolutely crucial. And the secondary is going to have to gel. We have some good pieces, right? Can they become a team? Can they operate well together? Because they, it's, it's again, like the offensive line, a, a, a position group that can elevate each other through their play and their communication. So again, a, an improvement player, but I want to see how he fits in and how this, this whole thing yeah. works, you know? So, so apparently the folks on the flagship station in Detroit had a massive issue with the fact that his stats weren't better than Jerry last year. Mm-hmm. And there's two things to that. First off, I don't think Jerry was as terrible as a lot of people remember him. Um, and I'm not just saying that because you love him, because I love him too. But oh, yeah, absolutely. He, he needed to be better, but he wasn't like dog crap out there. Mm-hmm. Secondly, Carlton Davis is a man corner specialist. Tampa Bay played man the 30th amount of time on defense last year. They were primarily a zone team. That's not where he wins. That's asking Jared Goff to go out there and do the things that Josh Allen does. That's the, that's the cornerback version of it. Asking him to do designed rollouts and throw the ball back across his body and tuck and run sometimes. Like That's not what he does. That's not where he wins. The Buccaneers were asking Davis to, to play in a way that isn't where he's suited to win all that much. When he did play man, his stats were, were phenomenal. They were, they were very good. They were much better than they were overall, and that's what you're going to get in Detroit, presuming, and you probably be, be, be careful in how much you presume, that they're still going to play in a lot of press man on the outside with some zone shells as well. I think Davis can do that very well. He is an aggressive guy. He's a ball hawk. He he will attack in the run. He's got length. Uh, I believe it was Justin Jefferson who called him the toughest cornerback in the league. It was either him or Jamar Chase, one of the LSU guys. Yeah. And they, their days go back to when they were at Auburn. This is a good football player. And right now he is the number one corner on the team, which means that cor- that that Cam Sutton is not. That's what we wanted, right? Yeah. Like, and he gave up a third round pick. Is Carlton Davis better than any single player at any position they could have drafted at number ninety two this year? Hell to the yes, he is. Don't forget that when you're factoring that in. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I do have to hit one more thing. Um, we talked about the draft party we coming up. It's a private party. Um, we're going to have somewhere between the first, or not the first, but it's mostly going to be Patreon people. If you're in the Patreon, you're going to get, that's how you're going to get your shot to show up at the party. Daytime draft events. We'll go down to the draft, do that. We'll hit Malone's with Frank the Tank, hang out there. We'll do some fun stuff. But also on top of that, we have the party that's going on during the draft. A giant, giant screen for you to watch the draft and check out what's going on we'll cover that completely we'll have all that we're also gonna have a number of people we'll have drinks we'll have grill going we'll have the whole thing it's gonna be a a party somewhere between 30 probably closer to 50 people um but the first 10 to 20 i think whether you are um patreon people or not we're just gonna create just something fun a little fun kind of contest and we'll figure it out get in your best costume something that's gonna Something that's going to move us, make us laugh, whatever, react, whatever, something good. Uh, dress up, 
put on your costume, uh, s- send it to us on Twitter at DET Lions Podcast, hit hashtag DLP Draft Party, and uh, send the pick. Or if, if you're a little bit nervous to send it more publicly, you can send it to Chris at Detroit Lions Podcast via email. And uh, let us know. We'll pick, like I said, somewhere between 10 and 20 people to get into this private draft party. We're doing it for the first two days of the draft. Uh, we may just all get together and not do a broadcast, but just like a party party on the third day of the, the draft. We'll figure that out. Riz will be there. I'll be there. Sam Ann will be there. Um, we'll have some other folks there as well. It's going to be a good time, a great time, and uh, a great way to spend the draft without spending 2750 bucks on a ticket for day one. We're now, going to show you, you what's up there. if you want to spend that much, I really like vanilla pudding and Julianne Moore. That's all I got to say. I just had to let it sit there for a second, Riz. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted that to sink in. Your face has, gl- has reddened a little bit. All right, so there we go. Vanilla pudding and Julianne Moore. Go ahead. Check us out uh, You know, with those little things. You yeah. get in and have a good time with the... Uh, the with- camera is not doing my complexion any work. I switched back to my old laptop because my new one is updating. Um, and uh, uh, I'm very red today, and I'm not that way in person. I'm more orange. <laughs> well, that's wrong, too. I want to be associated with the orange man. So I'm not, uh, I'm not green. I'm not, I'm not, Just I'm, I'm paler than I appear to be right now. Put the shovel down, Riz. <laughs> put the shovel down. Yes. Yes. First thing you do when you're digging a hole is to stop freaking digging. That's how you get out of a hole. Oh man. Yeah. No, we'll have a great time. The party's going to be great. There's, um, there's a champagne room there. Although anyway, it's a good time. We'll have a lot of fun. Um, so check it out. You can send us those things and we'll rock and roll with that. In the meantime, don't forget to spot us on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. At least $5 a month gets you included into the Slack chat and, um, the Slack chat who wouldn't be want to be there. It's a great place to hang out with Riz, me, Ash, Bishop and Brown, uh, Dr. Liao, everybody's out there. By the way, check out Dr. Liao's latest video. It's great. Yeah. He's yeah. so good. Um, glad, glad he didn't say tapioca. The, <laughs> loved how we talked about going to the, the, the 49ers game and all that. That was that was cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers, Doc. Oh, man. Um, there we go. Okay, let's see. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Jeff Risden and at DET Lions Podcast. DET Lions Podcast, that's where you send those, those costume pictures. We'll have fun with the costume party. Uh, hashtag. DLP draft party. Send us another. Uh, DET Lions podcast. You follow us there. You get all the show notes, information, when we're going live, when we are live, all that kind of stuff. And you can see us hanging out, hands free all the time. And be sure to go to DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Subscribe to the podcast so we can do it, Royce. What are we going to do? I can come in your ear holes automatically. That's right. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on the Detroit Lions podcast. Remember, no pants. No toasters, no hot tubs, and no problems, baby, because we are Detroit Lions.